previous videos, we used the matrix inverse method for solving simultaneous equations. There is another method called the Kramer's rule that uh, uses determinants to solve simultaneous equations. Let us see how this method is used in the input-output analysis. This is an input coefficient matrix for three industries L, M, N, N. See, L, M, N, N. Suppose F is a vector of final demand for the three industries and it is given by 300, 500 and 400. Let L, M and N be the output of industry L, M and N respectively that needs to be produced to meet the intermediate and the final demand. Recall that the input coefficient matrix gives the per unit requirement. Therefore, the total output may be mathematically expressed as L is equal to 0.3L plus 0.2M plus 0.4N plus 300. M will be equal to 0.2M plus 0.1N plus 500 because there is no value for L in the second case and N will be equal to 0.1 L plus 0.2 M plus 0.2 N plus 400. We therefore have a system of simultaneous equation. Simplifying these three equations, we can get L minus 0.3L minus 0.2M minus 0.4N is equal to 300 then M minus 0.2 M minus 0.1 N will be equal to 500 minus 0.1 L minus 0.2 M plus N minus 0.2 N will be equal to 400. Now expressing the equations in matrix form gives us three matrices. The first matrix of coefficient, the second matrix of the variables L, M and N and the third the vector of the final demand. So we will have 0.7 minus 0.2 minus 0.4 0, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.2 0 0.8 so this will be the matrix of the coefficients this will be multiplied by l m and n the vector of the variables and that will be equal to the vector of the final demand. Let us now name the coefficient matrix as C. So we will use Kramer's rule to solve this problem. Now Kramer's rule uses the ratio of determinants. So L will be equal to say C1 divided by determinant of C. Now in Kramer's rule C1 will be 
the matrix of the coefficient in which the first column will be replaced by the vector of final demands so let us now write c1 so c1 will be replaced by say 300 500 and 400 and the rest will remain the same minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 so this will be c1 so this c1 is what it is the matrix of the coefficient in which the first column of the coefficient has been replaced with the values of the final demand vector and that is divided by the determinant of C. Similarly, we find out the values for M and N. So M will be, let us name it C2 divided by determinant C. Now what is C2? C2 will be again the matrix of the coefficient and in this case the second column will be replaced by the values of the final demand vector so the first row sorry the first column was 0 0.7 0 and minus 0 0.1 and the second column will be now replaced with the final demand 500 and 400 and third column will also remain the same. Sorry, this will be determinant, not matrix. We will find out the determinant of the matrix C. This is determinant of C1 and this is determinant of C2 and this is divided by C. N will be equal to determinant of C3 suppose divided by C. So in this case the third column will be replaced with the values of the final demand. So we have 0 0.7, 0, minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.8, minus 0 0.2 divided by determinant of C. So after calculating L will be equal to 442 divided by 0 0.4 and that is equal to 1 1 0, 5. M will be equal to 291 divided by 0 0.4 and that is equal to 727.5 and N will be equal to 328 divided by 0 0.4 and that is equal to 820. Therefore, the output that should be produced by the three industries to meet the total demand is 1105, 727.5 and 820 respectively for industry L, M and N. So we have completed six weeks of this course. You may not be using the mathematical concepts that you learned to solve your daily problems but unknowingly, you will find yourself seeing the world differently because now your mind has taken a sharp turn from ordinary thinking to scientific and economic thinking. So see you next week. Till then, enjoy life and keep learning.